Hello, Nicholas. Could you give an introduction about yourself? Absolutely. Nice to meet you, Rokas. Um, I'm 23. Um, I like to consider myself a little bit of an entrepreneur. Um, I've been in the real world for about eight months now, and it's been life changing for me. I, I didn't think I'd ever be where I am today. So I'm, I'm very excited to talk about what I've learned. Okay, so you say life changing. So let's go with what was your life like before you joined? And how did you find out about the real world? Um, so I'll, I'll start with my life kind of before. Um, I like to compare it to Camelot. The first 10 years of my life, my parents made an accumulation of $500,000 a year. We had a beautiful house. Everything was put together. Um, and then my brother took his life. Um, and man, it, it put everything like into a meat grinder. I lost my house. My parents got divorced. Um, I was diagnosed as depressed. Um, and my life was just pretty miserable for the first, I don't know, from, from 10 to, to 19 at the very least. And then I started working my normal job. I became a janitor and I was trying to figure myself out. And it wasn't until Tate became really popular that I figured out about the real world. And I was talking to my dad and he looked at me and my dad's normally a very serious man. He jokes a lot, but when he was talking about Andrew Tate, he wanted me to know that this should be somebody who I look to as a mentor. And I've, my father's always been my mentor. I've never had him say, this is somebody you should follow. So I joined the real world. Um, I got into the business mastery campus and, and life started to take off, whether it was how I was implementing it into my, my current business, which I, I look forward to talking about, or if it was just my frame of mind. I'm, I'm not somebody who sits around depressed and lazy anymore. I still do some habits that I wish I didn't have. But in comparison, I, I was a shell of a human being for the last it, like 15 years. And I just, I don't want to be that ever again. So thanks to the real world, I don't think I, I'll ever be, whether it's the fortuity I've built in my own brain, if it's the, the, the processes the real world has taught me, I'm, I'm just a happier person for it. And, and that's why it's changed my life. Wow. Quite a story there. Um, okay, so you say for about 15 years, things were rough as expected because of such an unexpected occurrence happening. Um, how did that affect you mentally then, since you're saying you got diagnosed with depression? So I'd like to know, yeah, a bit more. What kind of mental state were you actually in uh, during that time? Yeah, um, I, I would say the first two or three years, I didn't even connect the dots. It's not something that feels real. But that that day we got the phone call and we were sitting in the basement seared into my mind and it it created what i would i put it as is ptsd because of the the anxiety i would constantly experience and the 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 triggers i would get from certain life events like uh, like a woman leaving me or you know a loss of a friend things that normally don't affect somebody heavily would would shut me down for a couple months i i would constantly be thinking about it i might be crying about it and I, it would be constant pain and, and the anxiety really picked up in school. I, I would sleep through all my classes. The only thing I would do was video games. I would play Counter-Strike at least 10 hours a day. Like it was my life. And it was the only thing I found solace in. I was putting mm -hmm. effort into something and it just kept dragging me further and further down. And when I was, I was finally diagnosed with depression is, is when I, had, I took my first attempt on my life. I was, I was really messed up and until I started to see Andrew and Tristan together and started thinking about what I was missing, I didn't really kind of put together, you know, this is a, a trauma that makes you. It's not a trauma that really defines you. And man, I, I hate thinking back to that time because I, I wish more than anything that Anthony could be here and Anthony yeah. could see who I am today. But when yeah. I look back at who I used to be, it, it's, it's nothing like that. Yeah, yeah. Any apologies if I'm bringing it up. It's just um, I had my best friend, lost my best friend as well. Uh, how many years has it been now? Three, eight years ago. And he had a little brother who at the yeah. time was five or six. So it just reminded me of that little brother. And I, 
wanted you to see how your mindset was with all of that to see how I could help that little brother now as well next time I see him so yeah thank you for that a- absolutely um, and thank you for asking Rokas I'm, I'm sorry you lost your friend and your brother as well uh, but again as you say it's something that makes you um, as it makes you yeah better person and well it resonated with me what you said like I would have really liked him to see how far I've come as well because uh, but yeah anyway okay <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's, no, it's um, okay. I let's understand. Go. So, okay, you found out about the real world also in a very beautiful way. Your father uh, recommended you look into the Tate brothers as role models. That's beautiful uh, hearing that from your father, I'm sure. Yeah. So, okay, from there you started listening to them. How did it impact your life? It, it was all mostly positive. I come from a very Italian background, so the only thing uh, I was never able to embrace from the Tates was things like multiple women or, or, or some of the things they would say. But that's because, you know, if I treated my own girlfriend improperly, my dad would come at me with a baseball bat. <laughs> so, so that's really the only thing that, that I couldn't attribute myself to. I could I could understand all of their pain. I could understand where, you know, Andrew had problems with his own father. And, and that father was actually a huge role model. All the discipline he experienced, whether it was a spank on the ass, all the way to just waking him up to reality. I, I could share a lot in common with that. And, and I felt like the things he would talk about, like being able to use your mind, whether it's the anxiety you're experiencing every day or the stress you're experiencing, turning it into rage, turning it into motivation and moving forward. I was, I was actually really surprised at how I could adopt that mindset because I didn't think that would be who I was. I thought I would always just be some sad, really anxious kid that just wouldn't go anywhere. Um, so I was, I was pleasantly surprised by what I was able to adopt. Right. And uh, that sounds like a self-esteem thing then. So how has your image of yourself changed over time? Is it through putting in the work that you started to see yourself in a better light or was it something else? I, I would think so, um, because when I was, I think I was 18, I started going to the gym, um, and this was before Tate. My friend Mike, actually, he, he just decided to drag me. Um, I was really fat. I was My BMI was like way over 30%, and it wasn't until I started, I was going to the gym like four hours a day, two hours in the morning, two hours at night. I started losing weight. I started putting on some muscle And that was the first time I had some of my own self-esteem where it was like I could walk around finally without a shirt on or, you know, oversized baggy clothes. And then I started to make money and I got my first car. It was 2017, which at the time was only a year old. I was really happy with myself. I was impressed. And then I stepped into an Infiniti Q50. And it was the the first time I could pay for a lease on a $50,000 car myself. I was driving around. I was seeing how people looked at me. And I realized I could build what I wanted and my personal image changed huge. I don't have those kind of problems. I walk around with my shirt off all the time. I'm, I'm a lot more confident in myself, but my, my mom likes to point it out a lot. I'm, I'm nothing like I used to be. Mm-hmm. And I was, I'm actually, I, I'm, I'm surprised you picked up on that. I had a really bad self-esteem growing up. Yeah. Again, something I can relate to. That's why. Uh, and uh, same with my mom as well. She says I'm a completely different boss now. Like even originally when I told her about the Tates, uh, she yep. was kind of against it until she saw the change in me that it had. Yep. And she saw how positive it was. And then from there, she's like, ah, okay. I mean, if he, if he had that much of a positive impact on you, then I'm sure it's, uh, it's fine. So, right. Uh, okay, cool. And uh, what did you actually get into when you joined the Real Watch? And how did that help you? So I actually, I wrote, and I apologize for looking down. I got, I wrote some notes on the last interviews. Um, so my first campus was a uh, business mastery with Arno. And, and that's when I realized I kind of knew some of the stuff. My dad is very business oriented. We'll spend like, if we see each other four or five hours a day, the whole time's talking business. How can we make money? You know, how can we make a new hustle in the company, whatever it is. And, and business mastery was definitely the easiest, but when, I started getting more into the other campuses. I wanted to find things that would challenge me, things I didn't know anything about. So copywriting and freelancing were the two that 
that taught me a lot. I've integrated copywriting fully into my company, um, freelancing not so much into the company, whereas I'm using what our company does as how we'll make money. Um, and then AI and stocks has been transformative for me. I was somebody who would always lose money in the stock market. I was trying to figure it out myself. And from what the professors taught me, my investing has gotten a lot better. But in terms of AI, we're fully integrated with things like OpenAI now, Dolly. Um, we're using a lot of that stuff in my company. And I don't, I don't know if I would have ever gotten to this point without the real world, um, whether it's the channels I'm using, things like posting in the winds, other people liking my hero's journey, or if it's just chatting with people. I know in copywriting specifically, I've never done outreach before. I was a cold caller once. Um, and that was the most into that kind of field I got. And when I started working with Andrew from the copywriting course, when you're posting these different outreach strategies, you're posting everything you're trying to make and people critique you, you grow 10 times faster. And every single one of the campuses I can say I've done that in, and I'm very, very proud of where I come, but I'm also very grateful. I don't, there was nowhere in the world. I, I found something like the real world where it was only business only like-minded people, it's insanity. Mm -hmm. Super cool that you and your father speak uh, about business whenever you meet. That's a very cool father to have. I love that. And uh, I feel, what, I feel is, very lucky, yeah. what does your company do? Uh, are you comfortable revealing? Of course, if you want to keep it confidential, yeah. feel free to do so. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm definitely comfortable revealing it. So um, we, I primarily do the sales implementation and training on Microsoft. So managed service providers, big IT companies will come to me. I'll train their staff. I'll do their sales to prospects for them. And I'll even do all the development of the products. Um, I learned a lot of this through freelancing because Microsoft's essentially something you buy a license for and you get all these tools. We know Word, PowerPoint and stuff. Most people don't know about SharePoint, um, OneDrive, Intune, all these management softwares that save people money. So. That's where I focus a lot of my effort. It's where all my wins have come from. Um, and we started off as just an IT company. We were going local business to business, finding people we could work for. We could do their stuff for them. Um, and that's why a lot of my wins are tied to, I mentioned it in um, our chat, was monthly reoccurring revenue. Mm -hmm. A lot of my clients choose to stay with me because of the things we supply. So it's also just been a really good field. IT is not something that goes away, especially with AI now coming out. You know, how do we integrate it? How do we get it working? I'm helping businesses put our AI into their systems. So it's it's been pretty great to be in that field. And I might go into something like private equity later or something that I actually believe in. But mm -hmm. IT was just it was a money field. OK, interesting. Uh, so now I'd like you to go more in depth on exactly how what you learned from the real world ended up benefiting your business. So something you said was copywriting, AI, and whatever else. Like I'd like specifics. Yeah, so I'd love to start on copywriting because this was um, one of my biggest wins I've had in the real world because it proved to me I could make money. So at my company, we do a lot of the IT stuff, the training stuff, etc. But I decided to make a certification program. It's called Certified with My 365, and it's a per user subscription. It's only $75 a month. Most IT companies have between five and 100 technicians. So a lot of those different buy points could be small to big. But what I did is, is for the first four weeks, I took an entire month of making my marketing and then the next month I launched it. So the first week was, hey, we're coming out with this new thing. Do you know what it is? The second week is, hey, did you hear about Solutions Partner? Are you getting your training? Are you doing this? The third week was, hey, now a limited time beta program is coming out. And the fourth week was the registration process. I gained $1,500 in MRR for the first time myself. And I knew, okay, maybe the real world's onto something. Maybe I'm onto something. Let's start learning seriously. And I fully integrated copywriting into the company's marketing strategy. So we have a couple of different avenues where we do cold marketing. So that's people that we find through our lead generation tools or I'm going out, I'm vetting companies, my marketing team's getting stuff. 
We then have our warm marketing. So people that opt into the newsletter we've created, that's something I've integrated AI on. I'll touch in a second. Um, and then we've even got our marketing to our different client types. So whether it's our MSP side for fully managed, if it's my clients on learn plus fully managed, they all get their own marketing. So that way they're upselling, they're moving through our systems, they're integrated with us and working with us. Um, so copywriting is probably the one I'd say is biggest in my life because I still use it. Um, I am certified in the copywriting campus and I, I don't know what I'd do without the copywriting campus at this point because I've also taken over the entire marketing department at my company. I'm now employing people into marketing. I'm getting them actually taught on the real world stuff. So things like DIC, PAS, um, the DIC, it's all in there. So they go into a notebook, they learn about it, they start using it, and then all the marketing campaigns they do for me are based on that. I even have one of my employees in the real world. He's doing a lot of learning and business mastery. It's been a great tool, um, but freelancing and business mastery, I kind of tie together because freelancing we use on the IT company. I was trying to figure out what are the benefits of monetizing this skill specifically? Why shouldn't I leave my IT company, go make my own business and either do what they're teaching, like go write for people, write emails, sell that, or go you know, sell laundry machines from your basement because they're sitting around like freelancing teaches you. Um, instead, of, I figured out, all right, well, how can I monetize better than we have already monetized because we were a small time firm at the time i joined we were worth about eight hundred thousand for the company's valuation right now we're at 2.5 million and in the it field you generally get between a five and eleven times multiplier so we're looking at a really good place if we ever decided to get rid of that thing mm -hmm. but freelancing taught me how to kind of optimize that in getting clients in keeping client retention the agreement types we have I couldn't believe some of the legal side I've learned from business uh, mastery specifically, and it's helped huge. Um, AI, however, thank God this thing came out. Th this has been such a change in campus for us because whether it was paying people on Fiverr, you know, getting people to make our logo, make our marketing, if it was going online and trying to find all these different ways to make quick campaigns, or in some cases, we even pay other companies for our campaigns. Now we have what's called Monty, Monty's integrated into a CRM we created, and he has nine personalities. One's marketing and SEO, one's Microsoft 365, and then we have various other ones, and it's an AI scripted to look at certain resources. So if I say, Monty, I need five bullet points on Endpoint Manager, and tell me why it's use cases. I'll get all those spit out by Monty, copy and paste it in a presentation, and then I'll get on my Friday call. My Friday call, all my clients are invited to. We get between like 20 and 40 people on average. We have 140 clients, so that range could be bigger. But the point of it is I use AI. I make a presentation. I get all these people in. And then the next five days of my following week is all about that call. Nick, how'd you do this? Nick, how'd you do this? How do we implement it? And the, and the AI just builds these presentations for me. Um, so those have been the most life-changing campuses for me because I'm in e-commerce and I'm in a couple of the other ones, but I don't partake as much. Um, but I've, I've taken them one by one to learn everything inside of them first. Very interesting. Okay. So since you've gone through a lot of the campuses, you probably see how it all is actually ties in with one another. Uh, so from your perspective, explain that concept. Yeah, I think the the intertwining of all the campuses is is evident once you've spent some time in them, primarily because it's the aspects of business. When it comes to the real world, it's not really about just making money or just understanding concepts in business. It's really bringing them all into one because business is almost always the same stepping stones. I look towards a book by uh, Vern Harnish called Scaling Up, where it's the four fundamentals of growing a business, things like employees, money, structure, things like that. And it's the same thing in the real world. When you take these campuses, one campus might be something you can monetize, but five campuses is something you can turn into a fully functioning business because they work on different avenues of that business. Mm -hmm. You know, AI is making my, my grunt work, things I might pay $15 an hour into just something I get done in five seconds. And then copywriting and freelancing are, are the core of my business. How am I communicating who I am? What am I talking about with when I'm going out to like trade shows? That's a big one I do. What is my message? What am I selling? And then what is selling? There's so many concepts in business. If you don't start in a foundational place like business mastery, things like copywriting, freelancing might be harder. So those different campuses not only make the other ones easier, but they make more sense. 
No, very well put. So you. since you have that much experience within the real world, how different would you say the material and the resources are within it compared to what's out on the internet? Oh, completely different. If you don't, if you don't know what you're looking for, it, it's almost impossible to like, I use something called thrift books. I can go buy a $40 book for five bucks and I'm, I'm buying tons of them, filling my bookshelves and, and some of these books I look into and it's like th this information is either outdated. It doesn't make sense in comparison to what I'm trying to find out. And it's almost never to the point. You're, you're going to find conflated information everywhere, where as you sit in the real world, you go through your courses and, and you might only spend five minutes learning a concept, but then that concept's in your brain. You have a to-do or homework, so you have to go and post in these channels and get confirmation you've learned the structure of something. You, you don't get that anywhere. And you could definitely search the web for a long time. You could ask AI, but the, the concepts in the real world, they don't want you to know business mastery being one of the big ones, uh, stocks being a huge one. They don't want you to make that kind of money. So in comparison to what I've personally found, because before the real world, I definitely did a lot of my own research, whether it was like scaling up, I did fine before the real world. Um, but that was something that was brought through business to me. I don't think I ever would have found that without being in business. So you're also going to miss out on a lot of things you don't even understand. Um, the real world really forces you into the unknown. You got to be uncomfortable. You got to figure it out yourself, but then you have everybody else to back you up. They, you didn't learn this right. Or, Hey, you didn't implement this right. Do this, try this. You grow so much faster than if you were just reading articles online, you know, taking notes yourself. This is way better. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> implementing all those lessons that you've learned, mm -hmm. how much did that translate to monetarily for your company? So for the company specifically, I've made about $30,000 in six months. Um, I'd say, I believe just above 25,000 is monthly reoccurring revenue. Um, and the other five to 6,000 comes from projects. Um, when I was in freelancing is where I got my project work done. So I looked at file migrations, email migrations, things I'd have to do over the weekend because I had my nine to five, which was making me money. Um, I make six figures currently. And I'm, I'm very proud to say that now because I never thought I'd be there. And if anything, I thought when I was in my 40s, that would be the only thing I had was six figures. Now I'm, I'm praying I, I end up at seven or eight figures kind of thing. Um, when it came to the implementation, specifically copywriting helped me the most because I have, I believe, a natural way of speaking to people, whether it's selling what I believe in or, or telling you how to fix your problems and addressing your needs. So when I could actually get in front of people, it was a completely different ball game. I could sit down, have a 30 minute call that should take somebody an hour, sell a client for $1,500 a month, and then move to the next, move to the next. Mm -hmm. We went to a trade show, I think it was two months ago, and it was in Tennessee. Um, so technically a working vacation. Um, and we would sit at a booth from seven in the morning to almost seven o'clock at night. And then we'd go out to bars and we'd do more business. And in that time, I came out with a whole bunch of leads and I ended up selling 10 $1,900 a month um, subscriptions to our plus plan. And these are all recurring. So, and these are people that have stayed on. We've retained all but two. So we're still doing financially awesome. Um, and the, the implementation was definitely hard. It took a lot of work and it even, it even took months to build up to. Like I didn't just go and sell these people, especially at such a high price point and especially reoccurring. I had to go in, I had to prepare for a few months of what am I gonna say? What am I gonna offer? How are we gonna portray this to the clients? And then I also had to teach my team what I knew. You know, this is my sales process. This is how I'm getting a high closing rate. And then we went buck wild. We went where we had to go. We sat down in front of prospects. We got people on these calls, leads that I couldn't use. I passed to my account managers. They brought those leads into me. And then those ended up in calls. So it was humongous for our company in terms of implementation, what I've learned. But financially, it was pretty big for me. I, I didn't think I could ever make that money. My dad, who I work with as well, he's the CEO of our company. He alone got about... I think it's at least 115,000 of the monthly reoccurring himself. And mm -hmm. I've always ridden off the back of that. Like, oh, you know, dad's taking care of the company. Dad's doing this. Now it's finally, I'm taking care of the company. I'm taking over the company. I'm doing what needs to be done to make money. 
And that $1,500 was a big, big stepping stone for me because now it's I'm at 30000 and I'm trying to figure out how I can do 100000 in a month. Mm-hmm. It's There's levels to it, but when you once you start to achieve, there's, there's no turning back. All right. Very interesting. So since you're on this trajectory, where do you see your life heading in the short term, medium term, and long term? The short term is definitely either selling the company or, or getting – you know, the big payday from the company and doing something I actually want to do, whether it's with the knowledge I've learned, uh, whether it's finding new knowledge that I want, you know, I want to continue in business. I want to continue money. I want to continue taking care of the people I love and the people I want around me, which is, it took a while for me to cut out the people I didn't want around me. Um, in the short term, I got no, no time to find new friends, build relationships. It's all about building myself now and, and building what I have around me. In, mm-hmm. in the medium term, it's, it's finding that next step. I, I believe private equity is going to be where I want to go because I know how to build a business. I now know how to sell a business and I know all of the intertwining pieces. And that's where a lot of money ends up being, buying companies, selling them. So that's my, that's has been my medium term goal for a while. And my long term's getting the hell out of Dodge. I want to be. I want to have my own land. I want to subdivide that shit and have everybody I care about living there. And I want to be the man that takes care of it. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get there yet, but that's what I shoot for every single day. I get up. I wake up at six in the morning. I listen to my stoicism with Marcus Aurelius. I read some books. I get to work and I find how am I going to make money today? And I just constantly work towards that long term. That is very solid, Nicholas. And you said you're Thanks. 23? Yes, sir. Um, so same age, same age as me, and you're doing very well for yourself. So in terms of just by that, I mean mindset, because mindset is a huge thing, like especially at our age. If you have the mindset yep. that you have, man, the world is just... Even sometimes you can't really fathom just how much you can actually achieve. In, yeah, um, I... Maybe, yeah. I definitely couldn't picture where I might be in five years in terms of achievement. I just know that Tate talked about brainwashing yourself. And and for a while, I thought it was just kind of a joke, like the Matrix or, you know, the agents of the Matrix, all this stuff. And then I realized when you get off things like TikTok, YouTube shorts, and, and you start to get your attention span back, you realize you can actually train your mind to think in specific ways. And, and stoicism, I think, is where it first started for me. I started, you know, every morning I'd go to the fridge and I'd write a quote by Marcus Aurelius. And I use him because he's he, him and Tate are, are huge in terms of my stoic journey. Um, and it just it started to make me think differently. I noticed like my, my daily thought was different. My my night terrors would go away where I'm thinking about my loved ones dying. And and then it started to transform like my everyday. You know, I need to wake up. I need to work out. I need to I need to make sure I'm working. Drink some coffee. You're not awake. Get awake. And I didn't I've never had this thought process before, um, but it. I'm glad I have it now. All right. So something I'd like to add from my end mm-hmm. is huge where you are now, because you're already in a way content with who you are as in you have the right mindset. Whereas some people think they'll have life will be better for them once they reach that other, like wherever it is, external goal. Uh, but you, since you're already reading or um, learning from Marcus Aurelius, from Tate, you're already in a good mindset. So even when you achieve those things, I mean, you'll still, you're, how would I say, uh, you're deriving it from internally, not externally, that motivation and everything. So yeah, that's very solid for future. It's a mistake I kind of made in the past. And mm-hmm. then I was lost for a while after having achieved some things. Because the interesting for me, the interesting thing for me about Aurelius is he had access to basically anything he wanted. And he still found meaning from within. He didn't give in to a all the hedonism or whatever he could have done. He could have literally done anything. In a way, he was the most powerful man in the world because of how powerful Rome was at the time. So Mm -hmm. he had the most power out of any man in the world and he chose to be stoic and um, just, again, find meaning from within. So huge. I think I rambled there a bit. But again, I really no, respect that. I respect uh, what you're doing. And I really look forward to, to doing follow ups with you in future as well to see how you're progressing and how everything's going for you. So 
to wrap up, uh, for people who are unsure about joining the real world, because maybe they think it could be a scam for the $50, what advice would you have to them? My advice would be, it, it's, it's time to make a decision in your own life because there is no way somebody can compel you to buy something or move forward with something without understanding you need change. I, I didn't even consider the real world up front myself because I didn't think I could change. I didn't think I could get into this mindset. I didn't think I could get into this lifestyle. I had friends who all they wanted to do was you know, play games and, and just kind of jerk off over by the fire or something. And when I joined the real world and I started getting into it, I realized, and I've actually made other people realize, this isn't some gimmick that's just about, oh, strengthen your mind, get in some workouts and do this. This is what will give you the key to changing your life. It's about the information and the knowledge you're going to get. And for $50 a month, with a lot of the money people are turning around, there's been, the, especially some of the past interviews, you did a guy that's making hundreds of thousands a month. And, and the wins comparatively inside the real world are huge, that $50 becomes nothing. And you need to start investing it in yourself at some point. If you don't do it with the real world, you need to do it with something, but the real world's that best investment. You have all of these different campuses for choices on how to make money. You have these different avenues to figuring out what money is. And it, it opens a different mindset. I would say I was never so concerned with where's my money going? What's my money doing? How am I making money? And how am I taking it from others the right way before the real world? So if you want to change yourself, now's the time. Sign up, get in the real world, stop questioning it and invest in yourself. That would be my biggest of why you need to stop avoiding it. Because it's not something that's going to hurt you. It's only something you're going to grow from as long as you put the effort in that. I guess I could say, you know, if you, you join the real world and you just sit around in your ass or sit on your hands, you might not get anything from it. But that's only if you do nothing. It's it's almost impossible to fail. All right. Completely agreed and very well put. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. So for people who want to find out more about you or contact you, where can they do so? Yeah. So uh, my email is Nicholas at NetLogicComputer.com. Nicholas without an H. If you ever want to contact me, you want to talk about the real world, feel free to email me, reach out about IT, whatever you need. Um, my primary vehicle to success, I'd like to say, or the horse I ride to the finish line is called NetLogic Computer. We do IT. We do plenty of other things. Um, but, but the big thing we're focused on is family and making money. And that, that's where I'm found. And that's where I'm putting all my effort daily. Okay. So I'll add that to the description of the video. And as I said, Nicholas, uh, maybe towards end of the year or in four months or so, we can do a follow-up interview, see how you're doing. Because sure. I'm sure with the trajectory you're heading, there's going to be a lot of progress, even in a short amount of time. So I look forward to the follow-up interview. And yeah, until then, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for the interview, Rokas, and I appreciate the kind words, sir. I look forward to the follow-up.